a day after Martin Luther King Jr. was killed, I decided to do an exercise that would help my students to understand racism. I tried to make a difference. I'm still trying to make that difference. Is there anyone in the United States that we do not treat as our brothers? Yeah. Who? Yeah. The, yeah. Black the black people. How are black people treated? How are Indians treated? How are people who are of a different color than we are treated? Like they are like part of this like. world. They don't get anything in this world. Why is that? Because they're a different color. I feel people need this because we are still doing now what we were doing in the 50s. Is there anything about you people that is different from one another that we could use to make part of you? Uh, I the eyes or color of the eyes. Okay, we could use the color of your eyes. How many in here have blue eyes? Okay, how many in here have brown eyes? It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. I'm your resident bitch for the day, and make no mistake about that. That's exactly what this is about. I do this in a mean, nasty way because racism, sexism, ageism, homophobia, ethnocentrism are mean and nasty. Today, I am here because I have been asked to do an exercise in discrimination based on eye color. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to give these nice, blue-eyed, white kids the opportunity to spend about an hour and a half to two hours on the receiving end of the treatment which we meet out to people of color on a daily basis in this country. They're in a blue-eyed holding room right now. They are not eating, they are not drinking. There are three chairs in there for 12 people. We're going to bring these people in here. You're going to treat them as though they're inferior because they are inferior. Everybody understand that? They're not going to learn because they can't learn and because we're going to set it up so they can't learn. And if they succeed, who has failed? We have. You people want to fail? No. If they get power, who loses power? We do. You want to lose power? No. We're going to accuse them of not being as smart as we are. We're going to accuse them as not, of not being as clean as we are. We're going to lower our expectations for them. We're going to force them to live down to our expectations of them. And when they do, we're going to blame their inability to perform on the color of their eyes. Now, in order to get them in their into their adult ego state, we're going to try to teach them the listening skills. Now, what do we call men that we want to keep in their childlike state? Boy. We're going to call these males boy. You're not going to use their given name. You're going to call them boy. Or you're going to call them bluey. Or you're going to call them fool. <laughs> now, people. What do we call women besides chicks, honey, baby, gal, doll face, doll, dumpling? We are going to give them no respect. How many of you have friends in that group? Let me put it this way. How many of you used to have friends in that group? Because some of these people are going to leave here very angry. White people's number one freedom in the United States of America is the freedom to be totally ignorant about those who are other than white. We don't have to learn about those who are other than white. And our number two freedom is the freedom to deny that we're ignorant. Today we're going to take away these people's freedom to be ignorant. I want you to understand how the system works. And believe me, this is how the system works. We make laws to support white superiority and to reinforce white superiority. And when you catch on to how it works, then we change the laws. 